Hola. Muy buenas. Muy buenas. I don't know what time of day it is when you're watching this. Okay. So off we go again. We're, we're with Emme. And this time we've just finished Medoka. And now we're doing this one. Menos mal. Menos mal. Which is less bad. Okay. But what does it mean in English? Well, menos mal means it's a good job. And I don't mean you've done a good job. It's like when we say, whoo, it's a good job that I arrived half an hour before because it's raining now. Okay. Or oh, there's a thunderstorm. So that's exactly how they use this to say. Bueno, acabo de llegar menos mal porque ya está lloviendo mucho. It's a good job. Menos mal. Sí. Eh, cuando viniste ayer, fue menos mal, eh, porque había un accidente en la autopista. When did you arrive yesterday? Oh, it's a good job. Good job. Because there was an accident on the, the motorway. Mm -hmm. So, menos mal. And you can just use it on its own. Um, say, ya, por fin he terminado. He terminado. Menos mal. Menos mal porque... Bueno, tardaba mucho. <laughs> so, I've finished. Thank goodness. Well, that's a good job because you were taking ages. Okay? Menos mal. It's a good job. Okay? Bien. Next. Narices. Now, I mentioned... Can you remember before I was talking about um, leche? Leches. Okay, well, th there was an expression which is, you know, no sé de qué leches me estás contando. I don't know what the hell you're talking to me about, or what the devil you're talking to me about, or what, for, good, for God's sake, you're talking to me about, okay? Well, you replace leches with narices, all right? And you can just say, no sé de qué narices me estás contando. Or, or um, no, it's the same, exactly the same thing. But narices has another job, okay? Noses, and it's when it's referring to the verb, and again, we'll probably talk about this verb as well in our verb blogs, pasarse, okay? Pasarse is to go too far, all right? And literally, it's like to, you know, to pass yourself. It's to go too far when we say, uh, I think you, you know, you're going too far now. You're going too far. Just calm yourself down, all right? Right? So you're going too far. So it doesn't mean traveling too far. It means going too far both with your actions, with your, your mouth. All right. So when you say you, you've gone too far, in Spanish you can say, eh, Te has pasado, eh? Te has pasado conmigo. You've gone too far with, with me. Or you can say, No te pases, eh? Don't go too far. No te pases conmigo. Don't go too far with me. Okay. But when somebody has gone too far, you tell them how far they've gone. And you say, ¿Sabes? Te has pasado tres narices. You have gone four, three of the four, three noses too far. All right? That means you've gone really way too far. You've gone way or you've crossed the line. That's what we say. You've crossed the line with me. ¿Sabes? Te has pasado tres narices conmigo. All right? So you've gone with a nose like mine, if you if pass three of those, that's you've gone a bit way too far. Just to show, so you know, the same expression, you can change narices for pueblos. And, oh, ooh, that's gone way too far. You've gone three villages too far with me. ¿Sabes? Te has pasado tres pueblos conmigo. Okay? You've gone three villages too far. Okay, so three noses or three villages. All right? Siempre se pasa conmigo. Se pasa tres narices. Okay? It goes way too far. Okay. So narices, that's an interesting one. It's a not singular, plural. All right? You don't just go one nose too far. Because that wouldn't be too far then, would it? All right. This one. Este. No es para tanto. No es para tanto. Okay? Um, what that means is it translates as it's no big deal. You know, it's no big thing. Uh, don't blow it out of proportion. No es para tanto. It's not for so much. Okay? So, um, 
somebody says to you, oh, sabes, joder, ayer el, el jefe me, me, me dijo una cosa, joder, como me, me, me cabreó. And you, and you said, so yesterday the boss said something to me and really made me angry. And you said, mira, no es para tanto, no es para tanto. Mira, estaba, sabes, estaba de mala hostia ayer, pero no pasa nada, no es para tanto. Yeah, look, he was in a bad mood yesterday, but it's no big deal. You know, there's, it's no problem. No es para tanto. So it's always you use it when you want somebody just to, to, to take and, you know, reframe it. It's no big deal. Just take it easy. All right, look at it this way. Sí. Míralo así. Mira, no es para tanto. Eh? Míralo así. Piénsalo así. Think about it this way. Look at it this way. No es para tanto. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's a nice one. Um, next. Pan comido. So pan is bread. And comido, eaten. So the sentence is eaten bread. Bread eaten. Okay? How do they use that in Spanish? Well, it's talking about when something is a piece of cake. All right? Now, do you use piece of cake in the US? When you talk about something that's easy to do. Yeah? All right, there's other expressions like it's easy as All right? But um, basically, we're, well, certainly in the UK, we say, oh, it's a piece of cake. Uh, that's a piece of cake. All right? Which is a ridiculous sentence, isn't it? Well, in Spanish, the Spanish speakers say it's eaten bread. Vale? So they say, bueno, eh, oh, tengo un examen mañana. Oh, tengo mi examen. They say, ah, yeah, it's pan comido. No pasa nada. Es pan comido. Tú lo sabes de sobra. Okay? Don't worry about it. It's a piece of cake. You know, you know, you know really well. Okay? De sobra. I think we used that before, didn't we? Like, you know everything. Es pan comido. Yeah? So, now, I don't like that expression. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay? This has got nothing to do with Spanish. It's just my opinion. But, when you do something, and you know that it's going to be difficult. The very last thing that you need somebody to do is to tell you that it's going to be easy. Because if you do it, and you do it well, afterwards what they're going to say to you, te lo dije, te lo dije, pan comido. Okay, I told you it was easy as pie. Easy as pie, yeah, as well. It takes the way. You think, no, no, actually it was hard. Yeah, it was really hard and I had to work very, very hard. Don't take it away. Don't say it was easy. I told you. No, you didn't do it. I did it. Okay. So when you tell one to say to somebody, es pan comido, think about it and say, muy bien, pues lo vas a hacer muy bien porque tú eres muy inteligente. Okay. Much better. Give, give, you know, pick them up, but don't take it away. Okay. Bien. Um, hablando de bien. Parecerte bien. Parecerte bien. So we've got the verb parecer. Okay? Then we've got you. And then we've got well. Bien. And how that's used is when you want to say to somebody, does that seem okay to you? How does that seem to you? Okay? Um, so you can say, eh, Mira, ma mañana vamos a tomar un café con Julio. ¿Te parece bien? Okay? Tomorrow we're going to have a coffee with Julio. Does that seem okay to you? Are you happy with that? Is that okay for you? ¿Te parece bien? ¿Te parece bien si, eh, si eh, salimos mañana a las nueve? Does it seem okay to you? Are you okay with the fact that we're going to leave tomorrow at nine? Okay. ¿Te parece bien? Uh, and you can say, Sí, me parece bien. Yes, that's fine. Sí, me, me parece bien. O, no, me parece mal. No, that seems bad to me. Yeah. Um, but typically, you know, it's, it's just like I say, are you okay with that? Te parece bien? Si, if, and then off you go with whatever. Yeah. Indicative. If. You don't, it isn't one of those if um, imperfect subjunctive conditional. It's just if with the indicative. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Another way of using that is is people saying, um, okay, uh, te parece un, co un café? Te parece un café? 
Right? You know this way that we've talked about, the, the just leaving bits and pieces out of the sentence? Okay. And th that is, does it seem to you, a coffee, missing from the sentence, big yawning gap, bien. ¿Te parece bien tomar un café? Okay. ¿Te parece un café? Or, ¿qué te parece un café? What does a coffee seem like to you? Okay. Well, the idea of having a coffee. And uh, how would we say that? Uh, and a coffee? Fancy a coffee? You want a coffee? You want a coffee? Should we have a coffee? Yeah. ¿Te parece un café? ¿Qué te parece un café? ¿Te parece bien tomar un café? Yeah. So, it just, how does it seem to you? Mm -hmm. Behavior. ¿Has visto lo que ha hecho? ¿Y a ti te parece bien eso? Have you seen what, what he's done? And do you think that's okay? Is that okay to you? Yeah. ¿Has visto lo que ha hecho? ¿Te parece bien? Pues a mí me parece mal. Me parece fatal. Well, I think it's terrible. It's, it's absolutely disgraceful. Yeah. Me parece. Te parece. It's used exactly the same as gustar. You see the pattern? Me parece. Te parece. Le parece. Nos parece. Os parece. Les parece. Just exactly like me gusta, te gusta, le gusta. All right? It's pleasing to me. It seems to me. And then you have to qualify. Bien mal. Okay? So. ¿Qué te parece si hablamos del, de la siguiente palabra? Pues a mí me parece bien. Okay. Now. Para nada. <laughs> I like this one. Para nada. And in the, the way that I'm, I'm going to refer to it, it means like no way. For nothing. For like no way, no how. Okay? Um, so you could say to somebody, Vale, ¿tú hablas con él? Para nada. No le hablo ni, ni le miro. Okay? Do you talk to him? No way. I don't talk to him. I don't, I don't even look at him. Okay? Para nada. Eh, eh, ¿Tú tomas eh, café? Para nada. No way, man. Yeah? And para nada is also, and I don't know whether, let's have a look, maybe we've already got it here. I'm going to see if it's there and I'll not talk about it. Okay, there's another expression which is coming up, which is very similar to para nada, but it just means no way. Now, when I was in Mexico, um, I worked with a guy, Alejandro, um, and he used to say that when I said para nada, I sounded like one of the, the pijos. Uh, pijos are like the... Yeah? And he said all the pijos in Me Mexico used to say para nada, para nada. Okay? Probably doing that. It's more... Well, less pijo and more, más gay. Pero para nada. No way, man. Okay? Okay. We'll leave it there. Lo vamos a dejar allí. Y luego hablamos en el siguiente video de más eh, palabras. Uh, es posible que notéis que yo tengo el mismo jersey puesto en todos los vídeos. ¿Por qué? Yo voy a grabar unos cuantos muchos. ¿Por qué? Porque Cintia está en España. Yo estoy aquí. Entonces voy a aprovechar del tiempo. ¿Vale? Uh, entonces, no llevo el mismo suéter durante días. Simplemente hoy. Porque... Soy muy trabajador y hablador. Vale, hasta luego.